Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about the week ahead, which is starting December 9th of 2019. There's a few changes, major changes, that we are watching and we're gonna be witnessing this week um, that's going on in the planets. Of course, I have the chart pulled up for us as well as some cards. I work with my intuition with both of those. I look I work with the symbols, but I also look past them. For those of you guys that aren't a part of the Bahati Vibe tribe and don't know the method to my madness, that's where my magic is rooted from. So when we're talking about this today in this video, you're gonna see a lot of those concepts and me kind of having like aha moments for those of you guys that aren't accustomed to it. And for those of you guys that are a part of the Bahati Vibe tribe and have been for a minute, welcome back. Thank you so much for your love and support. And on that note, let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing that is really standing out to me um, this week is not what has happened this week, because this week is technically starting on the 9th of December. It is what has already happened. We have this transit going on in the stars currently as we speak with Sun squaring off with Neptune. This doesn't have to be problematic, but it can be problematic. And whenever this transit happens and occurs, I always, always tell people to um, be really mindful of their energy, be really mindful of their body, their vitality, the things that they're consuming, and what environment they're in. Because if you are sensitive to it, or if you're not normally sensitive to something that um, you've become, that is almost normal to you, all that normal, it just won't, it won't vibe. This is when you really want to be super hyper tuned into whether you want to or whether you don't want to. Your body just naturally kind of attunes to the environment and you can't ignore the things that are your body is expelling or rejecting. And this is felt on a physical, it's felt emotionally, spiritually, um, and mentally. So this is again, it challenges our normals. It challenges what you deem as normal because your body is constantly changing, constantly evolving. You yourself are changing and evolving. And as that happens, the planets will present opportunities and present things to you that you need to see and, and examine. And under a transit like this, although it's already happened on the 8th, it's still bleeding into it. Like, that's the thing too, is that with ast astrological tr transits and these changes, they're not felt one and done that one day. They typically extend for a period of time, some longer than others, depending on what's going on in your natal chart. Because this reading is for the collective, it's not just you, because I'm not looking at just your chart, I'm looking at all of the influence of what's going on around us. So we have to kind of leave a little room some wiggle room. The other thing that is happening, the major trans, one of the major transits that's happening this week is the fact that Mercury ruling our mind, our communication, our, how we speak, and the information that is that we're receiving is moving into the sign of Sagittarius. There's been a lot of emphasis around Sagittarius energy. In fact, the new, the full moon that's happening in the sign of Gemini, I kept boggling it, not boggling it, but botching it the words that it was that I was using, that I was, that I was speaking, because I was spending so much time focusing on Sagittarius energy because that's what we're seeing within the charts with um, Jupiter moving out of the sign of Sagittarius and but the sun uh, transiting through Sagittarius um, and now Mercury entering into the sign of Sagittarius. So with that being said, I just find this so interesting because one of the one of the intuitive messages that I pulled this week and I just saw 777, one of the intuitive messages that came to me this week is, um, it's so interesting because I call it splitting, which makes a lot of sense now that I'm saying this because the full moon in Gemini is happening with just a sign of twins, which is, you know, um, you know, the, like their split, it's splitation from the same thing, like from the same egg. But that's the word that came through was split, like splitting. And basically when I sat with that and I just was like, well, what does that mean? Why are we, why is the word splitting coming through for us that, or for me to share with you guys? And essentially what I'm actually seeing Oh my God, and that makes sense too because we have the High Priestess here and also the Eight of Swords and the, and the Ace of Swords 
it's about why why am I drawn to the high priestess when it comes to splitting because she is the guardian of you know the two worlds the physical and the spiritual the shadow and the light and she stands as the guardian between that before you can enter into the chamber of secrets that's what I'm gonna call it the chamber of secrets okay and every single one of us has access to this we just have to do the work we have to do the spiritual work but anyways so when it comes to splitation I'm actually seeing so many of us you and I, we are stepping into a space where we are separating ourselves, splitting from ourselves. Um, we're, and by that, I mean our egos. And when I use the word ego, I mean our identity, how we know ourselves to be is separating um, from ourselves temporarily. It's like a perspective shift so that we can really step into a space of power. Now, this does not deviate or pull you away from your intuition or your logical self. In fact, if what it is going to do is it's going to help you to blend both of those worlds, the intuitive and the logical, more realistic, um, common sense side of yourself. Both of those things are coming together. They are merging together. So those are some things that I'm seeing that are gonna help you guys to step into your power this week. And when this happens, and the reason, wait, the reason why is because for many of us, you know, we've been calling the shots a certain way for a good chunk of our lives, or maybe we've been giving our power, handing our power over to other people. Maybe we're codependent on something. And when we split ourselves and pull our egos out of the picture, like disjoint it and look at it from the higher self, from a higher pr perspective and call the shots from a higher perspective that merges both the emperor and the emperor's energy um, that we find within ourselves, no matter what, how, how we identify as, um, whether we see ourselves as more masculine or more feminine or a combination of the both, it helps us to step into a space where we are um, really pulling ourselves up by the bootstraps and we do it all by ourselves. The one thing that I will say that came to me during this week's reading is how we have been in a space of almost passive, receptive, um, feminine energy the shadow side many of you guys can relate to that because you have been working with the shadow and you've been working on empress energy and you've been working on your goddess vibes um, which has been very I don't want to say passive in the way that you're rolling over and just allowing things to happen to you but you're allowing yourself to flow right so I'm definitely seeing that that stage in our lives because I kept saying it on the YouTube channel every day I would come in I'd be like go with the flow go with the go go with the flow go with the flow right well now this week is that there's an energy shift, there's an energy change, and I'm seeing us rolling our sleeves up and really saying, okay, now it's time for me to get started. Now it's time for me to do. Now it's time for me to step into that masculine energy and be yang and then do what I have to do in order to get this thing done. And I feel as though the best way to do that is what I was saying and what, I, what I'm seeing that we're called to do is what I was saying, which is splitting ourselves, not disconnecting from our intuitive, not disconnecting from our logical, but pulling ourselves from our, our higher selves, like connecting with that higher self, and then saying, okay, what would they do? So this is what we envision for ourselves. We are magnifying our ambition, we're magnifying our vision, we're magnifying our steps, we're magnifying our energy by connecting with this ideal higher version self. And when we see that image, Sometimes the, re the best thing, why we're splitting from it is because we can't relate to it in that moment. It's something that we strive to be, so it seems so far away. But when you have that vision of who you want to be and who you see yourself as, you have to kind of separate yourself from your current ego. Ego, again, meaning like how you know yourself to be and who you've become accustomed to, that old normal, and now we're stepping into this new normal. Now you are saying, what decisions would this higher self say? What, des what decisions would she do? What would he do in the circumstance? What is, if, if, if I was them, and meaning your higher self, and this is what I wanted, and this is the decision, or this is the person who came into my life, or this is the phone call that I just answered, what would they do? And you're gonna make decisions. Now this is stepping into total emperor vibes. This is the emperor at the top, and the emperor in the Wheel of Fortune at the very top of the reading and what would the emperor side of ourselves do meanwhile what i'm seeing in the recent past is the empress energy the ace of ace of pentacles also which is what has been in the past with the empress and the ace of pentacles i'm actually seeing people wanting to come up to you and choose you they're wanting to invest in you they're, it's like sitting on an island and then 
being put there by the universe and enjoying the fruits of that island and allowing yourself to relax in the sun and allowing the waves to come up and bring blessings to you at the shore. So that's where a lot of you guys have been at is actually putting yourself in new spaces that are environ that are fertile, that are growing, that are abundant, that are fruitful, that are sweet, that are juicy. And then I'm also seeing you guys being the embodiment of that. Now, I'm seeing um, you carrying that energy now into this week, but it's not just masculine energy that you're now working with. It's not just you receiving that because I'm, I'm seeing how you guys are mastering your ability to receive, to be receptive. I'm seeing you guys have mastered your ability to do and to strive. Now it's a combination of the both of those things. Now, the Wheel of Fortune is not about you just striking like a strike of good luck sometimes that can happen especially with jupiter and uranus um coming together in a beautiful trine on the 15th we're going to be feeling this for quite some time for like a, for months but not only is it just that stroke of good luck but it's the decisions that it is that you make that create your quote unquote good luck now i'm almost wanting to call that good luck karma because this is a, a direct result and an answer to what you have been doing up until this point. Some of you guys are really tired and have been called into an area of rest and that's why I'm really seeing this empress energy, this fruitful energy, this abundance. It almost reminds me of Bali or Thailand. That's what I'm kind of like getting or the Caribbean islands or something where it's very tropical, very lush, very fruitful. So you've been learning how to master that because you've been guided to do that and that was the, the, the near past. Even though I'm saying it's the past, I'm not, that's not, you know, what we're totally letting go of. We're taking aspects of that, what we've learned into the present and also carrying it into the future. While I'm saying that, the Emperor and the Wheel of Fortune is at the very top of the, this reading and the messages that it is I'm seeing is splitting. This is where you are pulling into not just the logical, not just the realistic, not just the practical, not just the receiving, not just the passive, because we've been there, done that, but we're, we're, we're moving from um, moving disjointed areas of ourselves, things that were once disconnected and off balance. Now we are pulling from the highest self, the highest vision that we have, and then we are making decisions in every single moment that will reflect the growth, how we evolved, how we're changing, and the word that's coming through for me is it's being amplified. It's being magnetized. It's being, you know, amplified the vision. The vision gets um, expanded. The vision um, gets stretched. It becomes more, not only are you more flexible, but you're very, way more open. Now, this week, Mercury. Mercury is moving into the sign of Sagittarius. Mer Sagittarius is naturally ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is a planet of luck, abundance, expansion, philosophy, travel, um, blessings in disguise in a lot of ways. So that is where our mind is at. I'm also seeing that as this energy is being pulled out and being expanded and being energized, just like this crystal, it's like the energy, the vibration is just you know really vibrating it's very there's a lot of movement these are things that like i was saying with this sun um square neptune you really want to be very conscious and aware of your physical body how you are feeling mentally emotionally spiritually physically because it you're entering into a new normal it's a new a new life you guys have spent so much time mastering the empress energy whether you are feminine uh, a female a male a combination of both or none of that Whatever it is that you identify, we all have the same um, aspects within ourselves that we're working, masculine and feminine. So we've been working really so much on creating this abundance, on creating this fertility and um, blessing and, and beauty. But, um, you know, now it's like now that we're here, our minds have been expanded and now we're seeing the bigger picture. Now we want to connect. Now we want to have at this point, at this juncture, you know, the decision that we make, let it be something that supports us, that helps you to thrive because you've been there, done that, and you, you have evolved. That's the message of the Wheel of Fortune, and I teach this a lot in the Sacred Circle Tarot School, especially when we talk about the Wheel of Fortune, is that it's not, again, about this stroke of luck. It's about you're at this point in your life, exiting out of this cycle that you've been, entering into a new cycle. And your fate, your karma, is connected to the decisions that you make at that point. Are you gonna take all that you've learned and make the same mistakes, make the same decisions, accept the same things, allow the same things, settle, do too much, 
you know, um, be, you know, be codependent on things that are toxic and negative, especially because we've been seeing the devil card a lot lately and the devil energy bleeding into the, the more evil sides into our music, into our culture, into our society, into our government, our politics. Those are things that we don't want to be a slave to anymore. That's taking people's lives. That's taking people's ability to thrive. That's separating families. That's creating divisiveness and hatred. Um, people are dying because of this devil mentality, this evil mentality. And we're not talking about it enough. We're just talking about, we use the word negative as evil when in reality is it's the negative space that we need to examine because that's feminine energy it needs to be nurtured it needs to be given life to because people's lives are getting lost we're seeing this again and again in society in music in culture in politics getting you know getting taken out because of things that could have been prevented because of the 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 evil sides of the devil card now there are positive sides to the dark and there are negative sides to the dark evil sides to the dark bad sides to the dark and what we want to do is combat that evil with light with blessing with beautiful with with, with um, beauty and sharing and generosity and compassion and kindness and love because that's going to rectify all that has happened and it needs it starts with you you connecting with again this higher vision that you have for yourself this higher vision that we have for the world this higher vision that you have for your purpose your destiny now moving forward into the future you guys are really starting to realize and see if you haven't already how strong you are as an energy healer as a light worker whether you take on that title or not you are working with light and you are working with energy. So that makes you an energy worker, that makes you a light worker, because these are things that you're working with every day. It's how you work with it, it's how you manipulate it. Manipulate it meaning like change it and make it malleable. You wanna do it for the highest reason, the highest light. You don't wanna do it from a negative thing. You train yourself every day in the decisions that is that you make by making sure that you are living whole, that you are being generous with yourself, that you are giving yourself the best that you can afford. And if you can't afford it, you're setting intention that the universe, that the opportunities that come to you are abundantly providing for you so that you can take care of yourself because ultimately it bleeds into the energy of the world. All of us benefit from you living your highest and greatest good. All of us benefit from you stepping into your purpose. All of us benefit from you working from a, a higher perspective of love, light, and peace, okay? All of us. And then what do we give back? We give gratitude. So moving forward into the future, especially with the full moon, the Gemini full moon, on that's going to be happening on the 12th, um, there's also uh, the word that I saw is legacy. Oh my God, how could I forget that? That was one of the words that came through as I was looking at the energy of Capricorn. This is about bonds and commitments and also legacy that's going to be handed down if you guys see me looking over here i'm looking at a rose bush <laughs> literally i have flowers around me there's an orchid over my shoulder and i kind of space out and i'm looking at roses as i'm spacing out um my computer is right here and i have my cards right here that i keep going back to but anyways when i'm looking at the energy of capricorn I, I don't, you guys know this about me if you're part of the Body Vibe Tribe. I'm not seeing just Capricorn, I'm seeing words, I'm seeing symbols, and the word that came through was legacy. Um, the, when you break down the word legacy, what legacy means, it's what is being passed down to you, it is given to you, it is a gift. Now, it's you to decide how you're going to work with what is given to you. Is it something that is working for you? Is it something that's working against you? If it's working against you, you need to step into your personal power. This is the energy of the emperor. This is you, you not, not you being an egocentric, um, you know, domineering personality. <sighs> I don't know why I need to take a deep breath with that, but it's not that. It's, it's a combination again of empress energy, emperor energy into your higher, your highest self. I'm seeing you step into a space of calm gratitude compassion gentleness because you know that your power comes from within and that you don't have to force anything you don't have to fight anything you don't have to prove yourself you don't have to rough and tumble your decisions are going to come from a space of higher like high, the higher self so that's not something that you have to fight for it's not something that is going to defeat you it's just it is what it is so you don't have to be assertive in a way that is um disrespectful to your energy or anyone else it's just you being like 
this is who I am, this is what my destiny is, this is what I'm doing. <clears throat> it's a resounding no or it's a resounding yes, or maybe it's an in between. The answer is I don't know. But either way, whatever it is that you're seeing is coming from a space and you're deliberating it, you're speaking it in a way that is calm, that is cool, that is collected, that is collected, that is obvious, and that is also yours. This is gonna be an, another thing, a part of your legacy. What is that you give to those around you, your name, how people know you to be, and how you give back, okay? So that's definitely what it is that I'm seeing, especially on the 13th, as Mars ruling our ambition, how we do things, how we strive, how we challenge ourselves. Um, how we go after what we want is moving through the sign of Scorpio. So it's still very intense, but it trines with Neptune. And I really want you guys to feel and see that it's not so much about you being like, this is who I am and screaming it out. You know what I mean? Or, you know, being, um, you know, rude or egocentric or um, obnoxious. It's just, this is who I am. That's it. And this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm about, this is what I need, this is what I want, this is what my intention is, this is my will, this is why I did it. I made a mistake and I'm sorry because I'm imperfect because I'm a human being. I make mistakes every day and I made one now. So it's like very much, you know, not about you being your way or the highway, or you being right and then being wrong, or you being wrong and then being right. It's about no matter what is going on in your life, owning that power in full and stepping into a space of calmness. Again, it's the highest version of yourself that you could ever imagine because you're taking your intention, you're taking your desire, you're taking your passion, you're taking your vision, and it's right here. And what we did is this week we amplified it and then we're striving towards that. We're making moves towards it. Calm, clear, centered, focused. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna hit the mark. Now the Gemini full moon, I have the details of that down below. I'm gonna link it down, down below. Again, you're gonna hear me calling it the Sagittarius full moon. That's because I spent so much time that day when I filmed it talking about Sagittarius energy. Technically what's happening is the sun is in the sign of Sagittarius and the full moon is happening in the sign of Gemini. So that's what it is that you're gonna see, but the message stays the same. You guys know that I don't miss a detail although i missed that detail <laughs> it wasn't that i missed the detail i just jumbled it i just kept jumbling it because that was just that week as in a, in a nutshell and then also um venus is going to be sitting directly on top of pluto conjunct pluto and basically what this is is like a power surge of energy commitment bonds commitments that feel easy and effortless and you're just like yes this is what i want this is what i commit myself to this is mine Thank you, I receive it, and now that I receive it, let's do, let's create, let's manifest, all right? So I hope that that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the description box, no, let me know down in the comments. Make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there are plenty more videos where this came from, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.